Well, it's good. It's good to be here. Amen. It's, <clears throat> it's always better, I think, when preachers behind the pulpit and we're all here. But um, I guess keep, keep, let's keep praying for a preacher. I know he's, I think he's getting better. And it's just one of those things where it just takes time. And, um, but, well, before we start, let's, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we come to you tonight and and Lord, I, I pray that you would speak to our hearts. And Lord, we, we don't need one thing from, from me, but Lord, we sure do need a lot to, from you and the Holy Spirit. And Lord, just do a, um, just do a mighty work and, and speak to our hearts. And Lord, challenge us, we, I pray, and we thank you. In, in Jesus' name, amen. I'll probably come back to this verse, but I want to start. So if you have your Bibles, please to turn to Luke, um, Luke chapter 11. And um, I guess I'll, I'll call this, Lord, teach us to pray. Lord, teach us to pray. And what's hilarious is <coughs> Josh Wilcox, he's, he's done a, I don't even know, eight, ten ser- um, series on prayer, and I'm telling you, if you have a chance, go back into the into the um, website, into the, the the church thing, and just look up the prayer series that Josh has done. And um, and I just challenge you to do that because I was blessed by by that series. This is going to be. <laughs> We just need the Lord on this, this, this end. But you know what? What's neat is we have God's word. And that's, it's just such, a, such a, a blessing to know that, hey, if someone can just get up and read the scriptures and proclaim God's word, then um, at least we, sh- you know, hopefully we can walk away and, and, and the Lord will, will have will have spoken to our hearts. Um, in Josh, in Luke, in Luke 11, the Bible says this, and it says, and it came to pass that as he was praying, and this was Jesus, as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. Lord, teach us to pray as John ta- also taught his disciples. And <clears throat> isn't that interesting that even way back then, John taught his disciples to pray. And you know, I would, I would just have loved to have been, been there and just heard it and to, to experience John the Baptist um, teaching his disciples his disciples to pray. And what's interesting is, is it says, as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, when, when Jesus stopped, it says, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. So one of Jesus' disciples said, Lord, would you teach us to pray? He said, teach us to pray just like John taught his disciples. And, and just to give you a, a sort of an upfront thing, I'll probably do a lot like what Preacher has done sometimes in the past. I'll have this long introduction, just, just go this long introduction. And then I'll have four points, and it will probably be short points, and, and then we'll be done. But um, I just want you to think about this. A, a disciple came to Jesus and he said, Lord, teach us to pray. And you know, in 2022, I just want you to just, just, just to think about this. It's the most interesting times. If you, if you just look at and watch the news, it's crazy. You have people that are advocating, and, and you can read it, advocating that they want the governor or they want the 
National Guard to, to take anybody who's unvaccinated and just make sure that they don't go anywhere. And then you also look at the government, which is just amazing. They think you can just print money, just print money, and, and that, that, that you can just do that forever. And just, and just, it's just, it's, it's just amazing. And then you look at, 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 at this world and you, and you look at the violence and then, and, and you can, you can see the violence. It's, it's all around us. And then you look at uh, all this, this COVID stuff and, and just, it's just, it's just fascinating. And my thing is during this time, Lord, teach us to pray. Because we are, we are in interesting times. It would be so, it's, it, listen, we would, we would be amiss. We would fall short if we, during this time, said, you know what? I think I can just do this on my own. I think on my own strength, I can get through this. Or, you know what? I think I, I can just, I'm just going to trust I'm just going to trust our government. You know what? I think our government, they can get me from the cradle to the grave. And, you know, I, I mean, the, we, I'm just, I'm just looking at this, and I'm like, Lord, teach us to pray. And, and before, I, before we look at anything, I just want you to go back, and I, I, I'm going to look at a lot of verses in Luke, but go back to Luke 4. And um, because I want to just I want you to see what the disciples we don't know what disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. But I just want you to uh, to see some of these things that these disciples were able to see and experience. So in Luke four, I want you to just go back and look at verse thirty nine. And it says, um, well, I could go to verse thirty eight. It says, and he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with great fever, and they besought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. Here we see at least Simon, who was a disciple, saw a miracle where he heals his mother-in-law, um, his wife's mother. Then look in verse 40. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with divers diseases brought them unto him and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. Isn't that amazing? Many different kinds of diseases and Jesus healed them. In verse 41, it says, and devils also came came out of many crying out and saying, thou art Christ, the son of God. Here these disciples are seeing miracle after miracle. Look in verse um, Luke 5, and it says, And it came to pass as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. He stood by the lake of Gensenaret and and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from land. And he sat down and taught the people of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had, and when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knee, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Just notice what these disciples are seeing. What, what a neat, neat thing to actually see the Son of God just miracle after miracle after miracle. Um, look in Luke 5. 18, and it says, <clears throat> um, And behold, men brought in a bed a man which was taken with palsy, and they sought means to bring him in 
and to lay him before him. And when they could not, by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said unto them, Man, thy sins are forgiven of thee. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answering said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts, whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins. And he said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy couch, and go into thine house. And immediately he rose up. Another miracle that th- these disciples are seeing. Go to verse, uh, chapter um, Luke 6. We're just looking at different things that these disciples have seen. In Luke 6, 6, the Bible says this, And it came to pass also, on another Sabbath, that he entered into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man whose right hand was withered, and the scribes and the Pharisees watched whether he would heal on the Sabbath day, that they might find an accusation against him. But he knew their thoughts and said to the man which had the withered hand, Rise up and stand forth in the midst. And he arose and stood forth. Then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? And looking around about upon them all, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored whole as the other. Here we see just miracle after miracle that these disciples are seeing. And the wither hand was restored. Um, notice verse 12 and it says and it came to pass in those days that he went out into the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God and when it was day he called unto him his disciples and of them he chose twelve whom also he named apostles so here we see these disciples are still with Jesus seeing Jesus praying throughout the night um Go to, go to verse um, Luke 6, uh, 18. And it says, And they were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. So here Jesus is um, healing um, unclean spirits. Look in verse 7, 7. In verse 7, 7, <clears throat> the Bible says this. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers, and I say unto one, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, and turned him about, and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And they that were sent returned to the house, found found the servant whole that had been sick. Here they see another healing where just Jesus, just he doesn't even have to be there. He just he just says it and and he's healed. Um, go to verse fifteen. Um. Verse 15, the Bible says this, And he that was dead sat up. Maybe I should go back, but it says, verse 13, When the Lord saw... Well, let's go to verse 12. It says, Now when he he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, and the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the the buyer, and they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. Isn't that amazing? Here these disciples see 
someone who, who was dead come alive. What, 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 just what a neat thing. Verse 16, um, verse 716, it says, And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God had visited his people. So there was these disciples, they, they, they got to see, see this. Verse 21, it says, And in the same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits. And, in, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. So here we see these disciples. They, they're seeing miracle after miracle. They're seeing people that were dead being raised, people that were blind, um, receiving their sight. Um, look in verse 48. It says, And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say with themso- themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said unto the woman, Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. Um, look at verse Eight, one and two. And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God and the 12 were with him. Isn't that interesting? The 12 disciples, they were able to see Jesus going throughout cities and villages preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God and they were with him. Verse 38, um, 38. <clears throat> verse 38, um, the Bible says this. Um, now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house, and show how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. Here we see um, the devils departed out of a man. Verse 43, it says, And a woman having an issue of blood twelve years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, And immediately, her issue of blood staunched. Here she was healed. A woman with a a blood issue just touched the the garment of of our Lord Jesus Christ, and she was healed. And these, these disciples were able to experience it and see it. Um, look at verse 49. And it says, While he yet spake, there cometh out from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead, trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made, made whole. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter, James, and John, and the father of the mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her. But he said, Weep not. She is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway. And he commanded to give her meat. And her parents were astonished. But he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. Miracle after miracle. Isn't that just, it's, it's, it's what a blessing to be able to, to just see this. And you're like, I thought the message is, Lord, teach us to pray. And you know what? It is, and we'll get there. And we're going we're gonna to get there. But I want you to look right now in Luke 9. Because to me, this is, this is, this is fascinating. It's interesting. Chapter 9, Luke 9, in verse 1. I want you to just look at this. This is what the Bible says. It says, 
Then he called his 12 disciples together. So I was giving you background as far as Simon was able to see this, and the disciples were, were able to see this. And they were here at this point and this point and this point. Now let's look at um, verse 1 in Luke 9, and it says, said, Then he called his disciple, his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devil, devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom, kingdom of God and to heal the sick, And he said unto them, Take nothing for your journey, neither staves nor script, neither bread, neither money, neither have two coats apiece. And whatsoever house ye enter into, there abide and thence depart. And whosoever will not receive you, when ye go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them. And they departed and went through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Now, this is what is sort of exciting to me. The, the disciples, they got to see what Jesus did. But in, in, ver, in chapter 9, here the 12 disciples are sent out to preach. And you know, what's, what's amazing is what God allowed these disciples to, to do. It says... He gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. So here these disciples were able to cast out devils. They were able to cure. Not only that, they were able to, to, to preach. Um, he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. In verse 6 it says, And they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. You know, another neat thing is they did this. They had to have faith because he said, I don't want you to take anything. Isn't that an amazing thing that these disciples were able to experience? They were able to experience miracle, miracle, miracle. Then God says, not only have you seen me, I'm going to let you do miracle after miracle. So now the disciples are are going through and preaching and healing, casting out devils. They have power, they have authority. And then we get to verse, uh, chapter 12. And we read it, we started with it. Uh, I mean 11, chapter 11, Luke 11. And I just want you to, to look at this. And it said, Luke 11, it says, And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. What an amazing thing. These disciples had seen this. They had experienced this. But when, when, when they saw Jesus praying through the night, he said, Lord, would you teach us to pray like John taught his disciples? And, and you know, know <clears throat> what a neat, what a neat thing. We, uh, I, w- I want you to think about this. Uh, where are, where are we tonight? You know what? I challenge all of us to be in a position where we could help others, teach others, Lord, teach us to pray. You know, and, 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 and young people, I've, you, you've heard, you've heard, you've heard this before. You know what I'm saying? Where as a church, listen, we could teach, we could teach these young ladies right down here. We could teach you to go sewing. We could teach you to um, teach Sunday school. We could teach you how to, to behave. But think about this. If you get to the point in your life where you really realize you're nothing, you're nothing. We're all just nothing. We're sinful. There's no strength. But yet we have an all-powerful God who who has all power and all knowledge and all presence, who wants to hear a feeble nobody 
ask for things to an all-powerful God. And then your relationship starts to change. Instead of me being anybody, I'm nothing. And yet God, who's everything, he's, he's everything. I'm telling you, it's, it's neat because, because then it's like our reliance is, is not on us. And listen, we, man is so bad because we will try everything. We will try everything. We have a problem and it, we will go, we will do whatever it takes that we can do to try to solve this problem. When God is there saying, would you just ask? Would you just look to me? Would you look up and say, <laughs> he's saying, folks, pray. Teach us to pray. Lord, teach us to pray. Now, I just want you to, <laughs> four quick points. But, and listen, and I'm sure every point you've heard before, but in 2022, when you look around this world and it just looks like everything's on fire, <laughs> everything's chaos, you, you hear crazy things, you, 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 you hear about like, you're, you're wondering, hey, are they even going to have food? Will, the, will, will our money be worth anything. And seriously, if, if, if our government just thinks they can just spend and spend and spend, listen, there's consequences. But you know what's neat? We have a God that can hear our prayers that we can come to. Um, but I guess I want to start with point one. We need to pray alone. Go to Matthew 6. Matthew 6. And I just want you to look at Matthew 6 and just, just a neat thing. In Matthew 6, verse 6, the Bible says this. But, when, but thou, when thou prayest, ent enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret. And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. When I'm thinking of prayer, one, the first point is, listen, we all, you but all, I, we all need a time that we can get alone with God and pray. You know, if all our prayers are only during when people are hearing, we need to do better because our prayer, we, I'm not saying don't have prayers with others, but I'm saying we need to make sure we have prayers alone. You know, it is, it's such a blessing to, to just pray. You know, your whole day is, will, will, will be amazing. When you wake up and you find a time and you get a hold of the Lord and you start thanking him for the things that he's done, and then you start praying for others. You know, the things that you, your problems, they start just, they start melting away. They start looking like, hey, that's nothing. So point number one, we need to have a time to pray alone. So have a time to pray alone. Then I want you to go to Luke 18. Luke 18, verse 1. The Bible says this, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward, he said, uh, said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow, because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear 
what the unjust judge said. Now notice verse 7. It says, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. You know, when I read this, I was just, I was just like, oh, Lord, help me to be faithful. Help me to be faithful and keep praying and pray without ceasing. And I don't know where you're at, but I'm just telling you, when I start looking at everything, where all these nations are, it's just, I've never seen where nations are lockstep in, in where, what, what, what they're doing. You look at just all the technology right now that, that, that we have. And I'm just saying, it just looks like the Lord could come back any time. And I really do with all my heart. I'm praying the Lord comes back. I'm praying that, hey, Lord, I, I, help me to be faithful. But, but what a wonderful thing. But notice verse 7. Uh, uh, seven. It says, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. And when I read that, I was like, oh, I think the Lord's coming back. I feel like he could come back any day, any moment. And yet the Bible says, will he find faith? Listen, I challenge challenge you. I challenge Twin Ports Baptist Church. Listen, we need to pray without ceasing. Listen, if you have loved ones that are unsaved, don't give up. Please don't give up. Keep praying. Keep praying. You have burdens in your heart of loved ones. Keep praying. Don't give up. Pray alone. Pray without ceasing. Then I want you to go to Matthew Go to Matthew 18. And in Matthew, Matthew 18, verse 18, Matthew 18, 18, the Bible says this. It says, Verily I say unto you, whosoever ye shall, no, verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever he shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Isn't that amazing? Two or three are gathered in my name. There am I. In, there am I. What a neat thing to have someone that you can pray with. Someone that when you get together and you say, would you, would you pray with me? And listen, we need a time to pray alone. And listen, we do. We need to pray without ceasing. We do. But you know what I challenge us? I challenge us to find one or two or three people, and you have a burden, I challenge you to share it. And I challenge you to share it together and pray. Listen, oh, it's, it's the neatest thing. When you're praying with someone, and you're praying, and that other person's praying, and then the Lord answers. It's just, it's, 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 it's amazing. Listen, I challenge you not to have the attitude, oh, I need to just pray alone. You don't. You do need to pray alone. But I challenge you, there's times to pray with others. And, and where two or three are gathered, there am I. What a neat thing to have one person. Listen, married, married couples, what a neat thing to have a spouse where you can just go together and say, hey, we need to pray about this. Or just a dear brother or a dear sister and bring it to the Lord. Lord, 
teach us to pray. Pray alone. Pray without ceasing. Um, always to pray and not to faint. Pray with someone. And then my last point is, <clears throat> this one is an interesting one. Go to James 5. James 5, 16. Maybe 15. 15 and 16. And it says, And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Notice verse 16. It says, Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. <laughs> My last point is pray with, with humbleness. You know, too often I think, too often I think we, I'll, I'll change it. Too often, I think I, <laughs> we don't even have to say we. Too often, we have so much pride, so much pride. And we don't, we don't want others to know where we're at or, or maybe a besetting sin. And yet, and yet the Bible says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. You know... <laughs> We could, we could, I could, not we, I. I could walk around and just be a hypocrite and, and say, hey, there's nothing wrong. But think about it. What a blessing it is when you're with a brother and I'm up here and I'm like, brother, I'm really... I'm really struggling. I'm struggling in this area. And I share my struggles. Now listen, I'm humbling myself. I'm acknowledging that there's no hope that I can do. I know who can help. But listen, it's, it's weird. I'm not alone. There's another brother, there's another sister that is experiencing this seeing who I am and praying for me too. Pray. Lord, teach us to pray. Listen, 2022, what do we need? I think we need to be in a position where we realize we are nothing and God's everything. We need to realize, we need to have a time that we can get a hold of God alone. We need a time, we need to realize, we need to pray without ceasing. We need to know that, hey, there may be not a lot of faith in these end times. But Lord, help me to be faithful. Help me to keep going. Help me to just keep praying and keep praying and not giving up and not getting distracted and not getting and, 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 and just not stopping. And then finding an opportunity to find someone to pray with because the Lord says he'll be there with you. There am I. And then the last point, as far as, and, and, and listen, this is basic, it's nothing, but listen, maybe it's a challenge, maybe it's something to think about, maybe it's as we leave today, you'll say, I'm going to try to pray more. In 2022, I'm going to pray more. Pray with a humbleness. My last thing, pray with a humbleness. Realize that there. I guess, I guess to, to word it another way is <clears throat> why would we want to do the same old thing and say, I think I can, I think I can, um, I can overcome my besetting sin. I think I can, 
overcome it with just a little more str strength, with a little more oomph, <laughs> with a little more just going. When, when you can get together with a brother and say, brother, I'm struggling. This is where I'm at. And the two of you pray together. And the two of you acknowledge that, yeah, I am weak, but he is strong. Isn't that a blessing? I am weak, but he is strong. Let's pray. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, what a neat thing to see these disciples. They had opportunities to have power to do miracles. And yet one disciple in all of this asked you to teach him how to pray. Lord, I pray that in 2022, we at Twin Ports Baptist Church would teach others to pray. Lord, help us to teach us to pray. And Lord, help us to be humble. Help us to pray alone. Help us to pray with others. Lord, help us not to give up. Lord, we will give you glory. We will give you honor. And we thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen.